What's going on guys? Welcome back to another one. So today we got another Thursday night kayak tournament and if you've been following this series since the beginning of this year this will be tournament number five i want to say and we have skunk every single tournament two fish stringer five till dark so normally it's like five until eight eight fifteen um and i have literally skunk every single tournament i have caught a catfish i caught two bluegill the last tournament i've not caught a single bass i haven't even had as much as a for sure bass bite i haven't got one up to the side of the kayak and lost it i haven't caught a single one so Today we're at tournament number five. Um, this one is kind of on more of a river creek system. So I said this last time, but I like my chances a little bit more here. And I'm just, there's one more after this, and I'm just fighting to catch a fish. A catching fish is gonna be a win for me. So with that being said, guys, uh, we are 10 minutes from the boat ramp, and I will talk to y'all on the water because I got to I got to figure out how to catch a fish in one of these tournaments. I can't I can't keep going skunk. That's not that's not gonna do it. Uh, yeah, but historically, Neely Henry has been a tough lake for me. Um, I haven't really spent any time. I haven't spent a lot of time up here, like, really, really trying to figure it out. But the time that I have spent up here, it hasn't really been, um, hasn't been very, very fishy. So, let's see what we can get into today. That was a good clap. When, you clap, when I clap my hands, it's like, all right, fisherman mode. You know, I'm all... Might be rapping and singing in the car and having a good time. And then when that hand clap happens, I never put it in the videos, but the hand clap is like to sync up this camera and that one back there. Oh, look at all that bait right there. I like this. I'm seeing bait already. We're in a deeper stretch of water, so that's automatically a plus. Most of the time when I'm when we've been fishing these tournaments in the past, it's been like four or five foot. Uh, like deepest at most of the places. Right here, we're in the middle of the river, but it's 30 foot deep. I'm gonna go up here to the end of this last boat dock, and I'm pretty much just gonna fish for what I learned are called APC fish, which stands for already been caught. Um, identifier for today is B5. Haven't been able to use an identifier yet in one of these tournaments. So that's the goal for today is to be able to just take, I just need two pictures. And I need them to come to here. This is the smallest turnout we've had for one of these yet. And only look like there might have been four or five people fishing it. So, uh, I mean, statistically, that's good for my odds. But for the pockets, if I win, <laughs> small payout. But hey, I'm just, I'm out here trying to prove to myself that I can do it more than anything. Uh, we got a whole bunch of slow stuff tied on. We got a Nico rig, something I haven't thrown before, but I have this wacky my new wacky setup i had the ring and hook already tied on so we tied that on might throw that a little bit today around some boat docks i haven't thrown it at all but it's essentially a wacky like a regular wacky rig senko it just has this nail weight in the head which is not too heavy so you to like offset the weight of the nail head the nail weight to offset the weight of the nail you just kind of move the ring up a little bit and then that makes we have that we have this texas rig sugar crawl max scent got a little popper net rig of course got the fritz side five chartreuse which i feel like that's going to be a good one today uh, especially with how much bait there is and it's deeper over here so we just i think i mean i feel like we can find a couple good spots and then we got the good old trusty wacky rig and then we got the black with the chartreuse tail today so three hours to catch two this is my thought process for the day if it takes me two hours if it we have three hours to fish, so if it takes me, you know, three hours to catch two that are big on the wacky rig, I'd rather do that than, you know, fish something fast and moving that they might not want as much. Um, so, that's what I'm going to try to do. I haven't seen any fish on the fish finder, any for sure fish, or any for sure bass, but I'm sure they're down there. See, it's still 20 foot right here. This might not be a bad place just to burn the fritz side down the bank. I'm sure if we go down the bank long enough, we'll definitely get in the sun. I like this stretch. This is, in my opinion, the best stretch that we've had so far. And also, if we can find some lay downs or some sticks, there's also some sticks back behind me. But if I take my time and fish all this, I'm sure I got enough. There's enough space over here to fish everything. 16 foot here. Got a little tight there for a second. Oh yeah, that's a bite. Yeah. 
got him. Got him. That's a bad. Oh, he came off. He came off. That was a bass. That was a little bass on the wacky. Okay. All right. That was a little one. I mean, he was super. He was a super little tiny one. Super baby. But, all right. Oh, and there's some bait right there. Okay. Oh, here's a big bait ball. All right. Here we go. He was not big, but that was a bass. I'm I'm okay with losing that one because he wasn't that big. And I knew to wait because I've been fishing the wacky rig a lot and with the ponds. And I know sometimes, you know, if you set it on that first bite, a lot of times they won't have it really deep enough to get it good. So, hey, I'm okay with that. I mean, of course, the mission is always to land them. But with how it's been going for me, shoot, just getting a bite to start off the morning is good or evening. There's a whole bunch of bait over here, so there's going to be some fish. big ball of bait. There's some fish on the bottom right here. The dots don't look very big and I'm going slow so that doesn't mean, that tells me they're probably not the biggest fish in the world. But. It would be nice to go ahead and get a limit, just to, there's a bite. Oh, there's another. Just broke that one off. I'm telling you, I got bit right there. Oh, I just hit myself in the chin. Took one on the chin, literally. Also, uh, I'm not sure if y'all are watching. Also, if you've been watching for a while, literally, like the beginning of this year, I dropped one of these combos in the water at Logan Martin. Never got another one, so I only got another winch rod. And then this is that winch reel. It's a five four to one gear ratio, so it's going to be a little bit slower that I've been throwing. It's a slower speed reel than what I've been using for these little front side crankbaits. There we go. First one. Hey. Stop, stop, stop that. Stop. Hey. Let's go, boys. This is our. There's two guys right across the way from me, so I'm gonna try not to be too loud. But this is our first ever tournament fish. say 10 and three quarters on that one see ya Whew, not a giant but fish and plus there's a whole bunch of bait up here so maybe we can catch another one yeah that's the first fish on the bfs bait caster too this thing is going to be 150 bucks i haven't posted the video yet because i was trying to wait for them to get on tackle warehouse so y'all be able to be to purchase them I think this is a steal of a deal of a bait caster, especially BFS. Oh, he came off too. Okay. One ate it on the way up right there. I got hit. I had it right here beside the kayak and I was bouncing it. All right. I feel like I should try to catch two out of this spot and then like tie on a bigger fruit side five. They have the five junior tied on right now, which is a little bit smaller. There's another one. Same thing. He's not going to do nothing for me, hopefully. But that's number two. <laughs> or I need to tie on that bigger crawl because I have that max ink crawl tied on. Or the five inch sugar crawl, four inch sugar crawl. 
All right, there's another one. We got 18 inches or so, give or take. Two fish, 18 inches, let's go. Two small ones. I feel like our goal should be two, like 15 inches. I feel like that should be should be doable. After I fish through here, I'm gonna use the fish the Ned rig through here and then after that I'm going to tie that wacky rig back on. All right, guys, my shoulda, coulda, woulda for the tournament. I had two fish, both under 10 inches, so I probably finished with like 18, 19. Um, the guy that won, he had two 13 inches, so I'm not sure what everybody else had, but I was the only other person that weighed in or like showed my results when I did, so I'm gonna say I came in second on this one. Uh, those Thursday night tournaments, the first turnout was good, and then like it kind of started to drop after that, but I think we might have had maybe seven or eight people fishing it. Um, so there's one more i'll put i'm gonna put the schedule right here if you want to come to it pull up it'd be we got one more they're all on neely henry so like if you're in the east alabama area uh, i think it'd be fun you can hang out and come fish a tournament with us but uh yeah so caught all the fish on this new reel from abu this is gonna be this was an iCast release. This is a Revo X BFS. The price point is 150 dollars and that's what i'm most excited about because i recently got that z9 and it's like 549 dollars 500 something but this one's 115 uh so it's a cheap entry point to bfs bass fishing um and this is what i caught both of my fish on i caught a couple i had a couple bites on the wacky rig i think i probably could have caught a couple more than what i did on the wacky rig but uh i say all that to say one this is a really cool bait caster i'm going to do a full video on it here soon um and then two i did a little bit of fishing with it when i first got it but i couldn't show y'all so i'll show y'all it now Got him. <laughs> I cast it over to him and got him. <laughs> that was quick. I mean, compared to how the day's been going, you'd think that it's been that easy, but no. How quick I just got that bite. You'd think today's been fairly easy, but that could not be farther from the truth. I've walked this whole bank and this is really the only place i spooked a whole bunch of fish coming down i figured this ned rig would be a great way to catch them because every time i see people out here it's normally all like crankbaits and moving baits i'm like i'm gonna slow it down with this ned rig granted i was casting straight up on the bank but this is our first official fish on the revo x bfs on the ned rig on the ned rig i casted it there's a boat ramp right here it's like a little bit of a hard spot compared to I'm a mostly soft bottom over here, so I figured this would probably be a good place to catch one. And by no means is that a giant, but it is the first fish. So, whoa, and he's crunk too. 
right, sweet, sweet, sweet. I saw him swimming. He made a lap over there, and then I was like, I'm gonna wait for him to cast back up or come back over here. And I made a cast out while he was on the boat ramp. And I figured there'd be one or two on the boat ramp. I'm just surprised. That was my first bite, and I watched him eat it. That's the best thing about summertime fishing, in my opinion, is you can get bites like that. Like, you don't even really have to. Like, you can see a fish cast at it as long as it doesn't see you. If it sees you most of the time when it's hot outside, you've already spooked it. It's too late. But you can have such a, you can have a situation like that. I just cast it over to it, and that fish was like, are you serious? Like a crawfish at 9 o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday? Oh, look, there's more coming over to it. But yeah, today we got the Revo X BFS. This thing is like answering all of my prayers because I have the Z9 bfs reel and it's it's a little pricey and i was like man i want to have a bfs reel that i can take on a creek float and i won't feel bad if it you know goes in the water i don't want to ever lose a reel but it'd be nice this one the one that i have is a little pricey so like this one is this one's going to be attainable for you know you can work you can work to earn this one with some summer money There we go. There's one on the edge of the boat ramp. There we go. Tell me, it's just that hard spot over there. Oh, he's gonna tell all of them that he's over here too. That's not a bad one. It's like, nobody eat the crawfish. It's not real. <laughs> Come here, dude. Hey, chill out. Dude. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. dude. Just chill. Got him. There we go. There's another one. Oh, popped right out. That's not a bad one at all right there. Right there on the edge of the boat ramp. I'm telling you, it's that little transition. It's like that soft to hard bottom. And he was out there hanging out. Got him. Cool. All right, swim that way, please. Thank you, sir. All right, now here's the real test. A lot of these ponds that I fish, whenever you catch one, it's hard to catch another one. It's hard to go back to back in that same spot. Especially when you catch them like that and they swim around, they jump. It's like it spooks all the other ones. They're well trained, I'll say, in a lot of these ponds. I'm in the, I'm slap dab in the middle of Alabama. A lot of these ponds receive a lot of pressure. So these fish, they see a little bit of everything. And there's not a lot that you can throw at them that they haven't seen. But what you can do is you can throw in the high percentage areas. And this is like one of those spots. It's the boat ramp, so it's like a hard bottom. And then you have like this mushy over here. So. It has shade. You can see the bait fish sitting off of it. You find the bait, you find the fish. So it's probably why we've caught two off of it. I mean, I'm not sure how long it goes out for, but there might be like an indention at the end of it. And it's a quick transition from shallow to deep water. So it could be a great place to stand and catch 100 on the Rubo X BFS, or it could be a place that we'll waste three hours at. Or we could just go get hung up like we are right now. Come on, dude. Don't do it to me. Ah. Got dude, that was a pretty good one. <laughs> so this reel, um, it probably would have been a good time to loosen the drag. I had it tightened down. Some of the cool features about this reel, number one, click and drag. Kind of that same concept from a spinning reel. I just like it. Um, I just like to have that auditory response for like whenever the fish is pulling drag, it just kind of adds to the fight in my opinion. I really can't tell you any better reason why you want the click and drag in my opinion. It's just something different. And whenever the fish is pulling and you hear that sound, it's like, oh, that's a big one. Um, it's the exact same layout as the normal Revo X, the one for the big baits. But this one's just able to cast the lighter stuff. So the crawl that I'm throwing today, this is a little Super Trooper. It's just a little Berkeley Maxent Ned Rig crawl. I've always said whenever Berkeley combined the Ned Rig with Maxent, that was the most deadly combination they ever could have made. I mean, just this is one of those things you can take anywhere. You can catch fish on it as long as your pond's not super grassy. It's just one of those things. Like you have a hard bottom or just like rock or, you know, kind of this hard, I don't know what you call it, silt clay bottom right here. This is just one of the best lures that you can throw on something like this, especially when it gets hot into the summer. Middle of the day, it's hard to beat a Ned Rig as far as like, if you just want to catch fish and you know you're going to catch them, 
It's one of the best lures that you can throw. And then this setup, I have it on 10 pound floral. You can use anything from six to 10. I have 10 because I've used six on some of my other bait casters. Not so much that I break off. I just feel like my line fray is pretty easy. You know, I catch the biggest bass, so. <laughs> I'd rather have a little bit thicker of a line than then and i don't think it makes too much difference i mean there's a big diameter difference from six to ten but for my fish i don't really think they're too line shy i don't think that i've caught less fish now that i've moved up i think a good rule of thumb is the smallest line diameter that you can get away with is always going to be the best but in my case i'm going to take this from this open water situation to later on this evening i could go fish a creek or i could be going to fish lay downs or whatever so i want that thicker line just so i don't have to worry about it getting this roughed up oh, dang it getting this that thicker line is going to be a little bit more abrasion resistant or it's going to be able to withstand more abrasions than that six pound the cool thing about BFS stuff is literally anything that you can do traditionally, you can do BFS. You just have to make sure that it's downsized. Anything that you can't throw in a bait caster, you can throw on this. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to fish tomorrow and have a good day. Um, yeah, if you want to come fish a Thursday night tournament with us, I'll pop it up one more time right here. Come out, pull up. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to fish tomorrow and have a good day. See you. Peace.